Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can set up automatic dialogue replacement inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So what automatic dialogue replacement does is you are able to set up cue lines, basically words or phrases that should be spoken at a certain time during your video between a certain time frame, such as 0 to 5 seconds, and you're able to have multiple takes of that same line. And using ADR you can specify which character in the video is supposed to speak that line, do multiple takes of the same line, and then select the final take that you like from the list of the ones you have recorded. So essentially it's a more controlled way of doing voiceover recording inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So in order to use automatic dialogue replacement you need to go over to the Fairlight tab and Resolve, that's the one with the music note at the bottom, and then you need to open up the ADR panel. You can find that at the top left next to Index and Sound Library. And you'll get this three tabbed window that pops up. So before you start recording, you're going to want to customize your settings and the setup tab. You're going to want to select a record track from your list of audio tracks. If you'd like, you're welcome to add a brand new one by right clicking in the audio timeline and doing add track. And then you can choose the mode that's relevant to you. If you want to hear a beep indicating that recording has started, then you're going to want a second audio track and to leave beep to endpoint checked down here. That's completely optional though, so you only need to leave that there if you actually want it. And we'll need to add in at least one character to the video, so we can hit add new here. You may actually have real characters in your video, or you might just have a narrator. You can give this any name you want, it's only for your reference, so that you know who is speaking uh, for a given cue. If you'd like for a second of your video to play before it reaches the recording point, you can do that by adding a number of seconds here for pre-roll, and you can do the same for post-roll if you want it to keep playing after uh, it reaches the end recording point. You can also toggle a count in if you want it to go 3, 2, 1 before the recording starts, which can be pretty useful. And you can customize these settings a little more if you want. At a minimum though, just make sure you have one character set up, and then we can go over to the list. Okay, so aside from playing around with these settings over here and adding in your characters, what we need to do is we need to add an input microphone to the audio mixer. And if we want a beep to play back at the start of a recording, we'll need another audio track and we'll need to connect that to the beep system output. So let's start by adding in an audio microphone so we can actually record ourselves. So in the audio mixer, which you can open in the top right if it's not open already, go to input and then when it says no input for audio track one or whichever audio track you want to add the microphone to, do input. And then you want to select audio inputs and then you want to choose audio inputs from the left and then track input from the right if it's not already in those modes. Select your microphone and then patch it to the correct track input channels. So in this case I need to take microphone USB input and put it to your audio track 1, L and R channels. So I'm going to patch it there and now I can close this. If you want to add the beeps in to audio track 2 you can do that by going to no input and, and then choose input from the menu. From source, select system generator, and then choose beeps, and then patch that to the correct audio track. So in this case, it's audio two for me. And now we can close that. Okay, so now we can go over to the list tab of ADR, and we can start setting up cues. So wherever you have your timeline cursor positioned is going to be the default start time for your cue, and it will add five seconds to that for the duration of the cue. So if I was to go to eight seconds here, or eight seconds, five frames, whatever, and I hit new cue, then you'll see that this cue will now go from eight seconds, five frames to 13 seconds, five frames. Of course, we can change this if we need to increase or decrease the duration. So I can make it one second less by changing that from 13 seconds to 12 seconds. In the large text edit area, we can add in the line that the character is supposed to speak which will also show on screen while we're recording, so that's kind of handy. It's like subtitles before you've actually recorded the video. So I'll put in something simple here, like this is a sample ADR recording. You'll notice that all of this information updates down here below in a list of your cues that you have set up. So from character, I'm going to set it as narrator as well. And that's how you would set up a cue on the list tab. If you want to have more recordings, then you simply need to create more cues for whatever duration you want to set it for. So when you have your cue set up, you can go over to the record tab. So prior to recording our cue, we're going to want to cue up our audio track for recording. So I'm going to click the R button on audio track one so that it's cued for recording. So while you have your audio track cued for recording, you'll be able to hear everything that goes through that microphone. If you want to mute that audio, you can do that by just muting your timeline over here. Don't hit the mute button on the audio track though, because that will prevent it from actually recording any audio. 
Of course, if you do decide to mute it, that will also mute the beeps. So it comes down to whether you or anyone else needs to hear back what's being recorded while it's being recorded. But putting that aside, if you've at least hit the R button on your audio track for recording, we'll be able to go ahead and start recording a queue now. So to do that, we need to select the queue. So you can see the queue number will pop up here when we left click on that, and it will also reflect up here. We can see the line that's going to be recorded and the preview window here, which we can pop open with this button here if we need to expand that and have a bigger viewer. And then we simply need to hit the record button on our queue. So I'm going to hit that here and you can see it immediately starts recording. And in our audio track, we have the audio recorded there. So if we want to hear that back, we should uncue the audio track for recording. And then we can hit play in our timeline to hear the tape. So I'm going to hit that here and you can see it immediately starts recording. But in order to time the line properly, I'm going to want to add in a couple seconds of pre-roll here. So three seconds before the audio starts recording and I can go over to record now. And if we want to take another take, we simply need to select the cue again and then hit record. But I'm going to requeue the audio track for recording here. And there we go. So three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Well, that was a terrible take. <laughs> Okay, so that one was obviously really bad. Uh, let's go ahead and record it again with the 3, 2, 1 pre-roll. This is a sample ADR recording. Okay, and obviously that one was a lot better. Let's just take one more so that I can show you how to select the takes from your cues so that you can basically decide which one's the best one. Okay, this one is intentionally a bit bad. Okay, so we have four takes now. I'm gonna uncue the track for recording, unmute the timeline so we can hear audio clips being played back, and I'll put the viewer back in the main window. So now we have four takes we can choose from for what actually becomes the final audio. So let's play each of the takes, but before that, I'm gonna get rid of the pre-roll temporarily so that it will just start playing from when the take actually occurs. And let's go ahead and hit play. So I'm going to hit that here and you can see it immediately starts recording. So that take obviously has nothing to do with the dialogue that was actually supposed to be written here. So I'm going to give it a one star over here. You can rate each of the takes how you want. That's just an indicator of how good the take was compared to what you actually want the final result to be. So um, basically for your own personal reference. So let's try take two now. Hello, everybody. Well, that was a terrible take. Yep, that was a terrible take. Okay, one star. And we'll do take three here. This is a sample ADR recording. Okay, so that take actually had the dialogue that was supposed to be said there. So I'm going to give it five stars. And let's play the fourth one here as well. Okay, this one is intentionally a bit bad. Okay, so I said it was a bit bad. I'll give it two stars. So the idea here is that we want to take take three and use it as our final audio. What you may have noticed is that even though this is one point in time for the timeline and we're only using one audio track for the ADR recording, that it was actually able to play four audio clips on top of each other. And that's because when you're using ADR, it writes it to the track using layered audio. So if you want to view and edit your layered audio, you should go up to timeline at the top menu and choose layered audio editing, which is usually not toggled by default. And then you should also go up to the view menu and choose audio track layers. When you do that, you can actually see the different layers of audio that have been layered on top of each other. Of course, only one of them will actually play back in your final video, but you can see that the other takes are nested beneath it. So it makes it easy to swap them around if we want to do that. So I'm going to expand this audio track way down so that I can kind of see the audio waves a little better. These are organized from the most recent take to the least recent take. So if we want to take take three and swap that with take four, then we can bring this one up to the top, simply dragging and dropping it. And now take three is the one that's actually at the top. So if I hit play again, this is a sample ADR recording. Then we've now taken the third take and made it the active one that we can include in our final video export. So automatic dialogue replacement is a really handy way of controlling your voiceovers when you want lines to be spoken at a certain time. You want to take multiple takes of those lines and be able to select a final take. And to also have a few tools such as having a pre-roll on account and to make recording those lines a little bit smoother. So that's going to be it for this video on ADR and DaVinci Resolve 16. I hope you guys got something out of this. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my future video content.